question. Do you think that Florida sports could be affected by a Ron DeSantis run for president? Meaning, do you do? Will there be is like there, is, like Florida like professional sports or, or Florida, high school? Yes, yes, because okay. he's going to make NIL and high school sports. And welcome to this edition of the 941 Sports Zone. I'm John Masoni here with my co-host John Peacock and special guests tonight, Jessica Pacino Hello. and Mr. Trey Burton. Uh, they are here uh, for a very important reason, a very fun reason as well. We'll get to that here in a few seconds. We're just going to kind of recap last week's show. It was me and Rich Spedaleri, our guest uh, uh, from the uh, from WENG on the Spits on Sports show on uh, Saturday mornings, 9 to 10. Uh, and Rich, I, I, I talked about Rich, uh, Rich and your and I relationships last week, John, about how he sort of got us on the ground with any kind of media we did. He was our right, first right. guy. Before, so. before he left, yep. He, had, and, he got it going. And so he was he radio, and he did a few games with us on the radio. And so uh, always appreciate Rich, and we'll have him back as a regular guest as much as we can. With that, we had some predictions last week, kind of kind of what you would expect because it's that time of the year with hockey and basketball culminating with their championships right now. And Rich went out on a limb and picked the favorites. He picked the, the Golden Knights in seven in hockey and then the Nuggets in five, which, of course, uh, as we're taping last night, it's a, it's a 1-1 series now with the Nuggets and the heat and so he's got to make sure that the nuggets can sweep the rest like of the, the way you gotta like the heat they, they won in denver that's so they evened it out they seem least. to be they seem to be road warriors they do real well but at home they seem to stumble a little bit and let's see if that's how it goes but definitely a big effort last night from some very key players and we'll get into that when we get into our national section i also predicted the nuggets in five and i also but i went with the panthers in hockey in six i just like the way their momentum was but they didn't look like they're ready for it in game one so we'll see how that proceeds with all that out of the way, we are here with Jessica Pacino and Mr. Trey Burton. And Jessica, you go ahead and tell us exactly why you're here for a very, very uh, new, fun, uh, and important event that uh, we're, we're putting together for. for yeah, why? For why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that every day when I wake up. Um, thanks for having me on. I, uh, I'm excited to be out here. I watched uh, every episode so far yeah, very impressed with everything that you guys are doing <laughs> uh so i am here i'm talking to talk about the sun coast snapper slapper which is a uh offshore and inshore fishing tournament that we are hosting from uh june 21st through june 24th it is sponsored by douglas jeep chrysler dodge of venice oh uh, what, do you know? what do you know yeah <laughs> they are uh big shout out to uh greg douglas and monty jacobs uh they came on board last year uh when we initially had the vision for this and and they uh they saw the vision themselves and they they kind of helped us get us off the ground so uh happy to partner with them again on this uh it's also presented by tri-county air conditioning and billy swanson who's another big supporter of uh, billy what, fishing what we do it? i think billy is fishing i think billy has two boats so i'm excited okay. um so the history of the fishing tournament we're actually the tournament that we're doing is an American red snapper tournament and which is which is not to interrupt you but that's the sort of a, kind of a, the novelty of this from the fishing perspective correct correct and I don't know anything about fishing I've never heard American red snapper in my life <laughs> until uh Trey said you know what you should do if you're going to have a fishing tournament you should wait till American red snapper season and I said what's that and he told me and then we kind of rolled with it, and uh, he can probably elaborate yeah. more on the fishing side of Trey, things. Trey, give us the, uh, the, the uniqueness and the importance of the American uh, Red Snapper uh, tournament. Yeah, well, they're uh, like, like extremely protected fish. There's usually you know 30 days if you're fortunate. Sometimes it's 10 days. The East Coast gets a couple weekends out of the year to fish them. And so um, this year, DeSantis opened them up. Was it, what was it, June 15th, I think, Jess? I think June 15th or 16th, yeah. Yeah, through July 31st, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so we get like an, and then also every weekend um, going all, all, all the way up till Christmas. And so um, we got an extended season, which a lot of us are very excited about because there's a lot of them out there. And you seem like you catch them every single time when you're not supposed to. And then you don't catch them <laughs> when you are supposed to, which is kind of weird. But uh, whatever. So, yeah, Jess, Jess does a great job running this tournament. Um, it's a lot of fun. We had a good amount of uh, boats in there last year, and uh, we're looking for more this year. Yeah, so just to elaborate more on the on the uh, tournament, um, we have a tremendous person that actually, I can't take any credit for this, uh, Rebecca Nardella. She is actually the tournament director. Uh, she ran the Sarasota Slam for years. Uh, she did a tremendous job with that. That's another tournament that uh, Trey's fished in in the past. And yep. uh, she's a Venice grad. She's uh, cheer 
VHS cheerleader, class of 2005, I believe. Um, so she, her heart's, you know. Uh, and her son's going to be a freshman, Son's right? an incoming freshman, right. yep. So she is all in on the program. Um, but she, could, we couldn't do this without her. I, if I didn't know she knew what she was, that she was involved in these things, I wouldn't have ever tried to put this on. So um, we have a great event. We have uh, partnerships with Jersey Mike's this year. Okay. They're going to do um, some stuff for the, the captains before they go out and fish the inshore and the offshore. Uh, we have uh, brand recycling. Um, they partnered with us big time uh, this year. Both of those, both of those companies, uh, big fishermen too, the owners, uh, Big Nasty and Slamarosa. So they're going to be participating in the tournament. They're going to do some cool things. Big Nasty. Big Nasty. Yeah. Are you fishing on that? I'm not fishing. I'm staying on land. <laughs> not going on there. I am not going to feed into that joke either. Um, oh, I, just, I didn't know if you were fishing. No, no, I'm not fishing. I have to. Man the docks. Well, we all fished last year. Yes. I, mean, I, I was in sure, which we'll get into as well. I'm not Even peacock fish, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we yeah, want to hear a, about how that went last well, year. Af home. After I had to bait Clay's hook, <laughs> and unbait his hook I was, they let me fish for a little bit. Nice. So I was excited about that. Very nice. Uh, we partnered with Papa's Pilar again and Nick Doyle. Uh, they did a lot of stuff for us last year. They're doing a lot of things for us this year as well uh, for the captain's buckets. Yeah. And some giveaways he's he's a great person having the community he really loves venice yeah. high sports and uh football and baseball and everything else he does stuff for a bunch of other uh, uh organizations as yes well. he does yeah um so schedule wise uh the tournament runs from june 21st to the 24th our offshore uh captain's meeting is june 21st at hooters hooters is uh partnering with us as well to do both of our captain's meetings i feel like that might be a big draw draw for and our honest, anglers honestly like the, it's a fishing tournament but it's like a fishing week it in is in so many ways because yeah. like we last year so everybody knows it's like there's there's a lot of sort of uh swag that goes with this in so many ways you get to go if you're in even if you're in the uh tournament you get to go to a captain's meeting the sponsors have sponsor meetings there are a lot of shirts and and buckets and all the apparel you could yeah, it's a, so it's it's a whole cool. week deal it's a whole week deal um we had about 10 or 11 boats last year our uh this year i'm getting a lot of positive feedback the words gotten out there i think last year and trey you could fill us in here i think we kind of the first year we did it i think we did it the right way feel like we had yeah, there were some big fish yeah. like really big fish big american reds peacock and i thought shoot after the first night we we're like man we got these american red snappers down like we're good and i'm texting my wife while i'm out there like hey we won this we won the, the tournament <laughs> yeah, i've never, never seen the snappers that big we pulled in and then and we, we came to, in third i think yeah with because they do the aggregate of the top two biggest american reds and so I think one of the dudes had like a 26, 27 pound American Red, which is an absolute, you know, monster. You don't really get them that big over here on this coast. Um, Trey, let, so the offshore meeting is going to be, and you can elaborate maybe kind of how this goes, how that from the angler perspective. Um, June 21st, we'll have, we'll register all the, the offshore captains. Yep. We'll have a meeting at 6 p.m. Um, and then the next morning at 5 a.m., they're released to fish. Now, they can actually we're going to offer an option where you can zoom into the meeting and which worked out well for last year so you can kind of be in in the keys if you wanted to and fish all the way up yeah so um, yeah you're coming from parts where part of the state right. you just gotta to come end from. up you just gotta end up at, at marina jacks right. yeah by 4 4 p.m on saturday june 24th that's uh, something that a lot of the tournaments have gone to because of covid and obviously we weren't able to gather in places and so they basically just did a captain's meeting um at whatever time and then what we do um, in this tournament is we have to send a video to Rebecca or Jess saying that, you know, to do a timestamp and a location stamp before you leave the dock. You know, the earliest you can leave is 5 o'clock in the morning. So 5.01, send a video. Hey, we're leaving. We're just getting offshore right now and send it in. And so you're legal. Makes it easy for for yourself to, or everyone to fish. Oh, man, a thousand too. times easier, bro. Right. Gosh, because you have so much things that have to, I mean, Peacock, you know, there's a huge tech checklist of things and everybody's responsible for certain things. And right. um, the last thing I want to do is be gone, you know, messing around at Hooters. And I got <laughs> guys on the boat not knowing, not knowing what's going on. I mean, we you know want your guys so, are uh, different. Great. Yeah. I mean, we want people to, obviously, we want people to be at the captain's meeting. We're going to, um, Jersey Mike's is actually going to be providing the captains after we get done with the meeting uh, subs for everybody for each boat to take with them 
So you have, something, nice. to have something to eat. Yeah. I know that was, I think that was part of your responsibility last year. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take care of the food. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. We, well, are you even invited? Are you even invited to go fishing <laughs> Well, if, if I'm invited, I'm gonna okay. take care right. of the food. <laughs> and, and we're gonna have a wet wipe so we wash our hands because we, oh, okay. we had a little okay. bit of issues last How, year with I, food I, and cleanliness. not having clean hands. And I, and I don't wanna get no into what happened. Everybody was fine, no one got sick. No one got sick. That we know. It could have, What? What? So when you, as a captain, and I don't know, am I supposed to be interviewing him too? Yeah, Okay, great. What as you're as if you're the captain of of your boat, right? What are you? Yeah. How do you delegate responsibilities to everybody? It's like what goes on when you're out there fishing? Well, we didn't expect much from John last time because he had never <laughs> spent nights offshore, you know. So and we we kind of do. I mean, if we're gonna go fish, I tend to like the because you got to run so far to catch the fish that we want that I tend to like to spend the night. So we're we're well well versed in it. The two or three other guys we had on the boat. So. Um, my brother does a lot. Clay does a crap ton for me. He's been me tying. And, he's been um, tying hooks for like the last two months of school. I know. He does a great job though. Him and Dean, man. Yeah. Him and, if I didn't have him and Dean, it'd be really hard for me to do the tournament. But yeah, so each person has their own little thing, and uh, depending on how much you fish and how many times you've gone offshore and what what you realize, and um, you kind of just delegate it, you know, based off of the comfortability of everybody. Did um, Did John bring his Nick Saban blankie with him? He did. He did. It was okay. a passy. It was Comforter. weird. Well, okay. Yeah. I just, you know, your security blanket while you're out there. Yeah. Okay. Good. Listen, nothing's going to go wrong if you got Nick Saban blanket with you. Don't worry yeah. about that. Did you sleep much at all, John, or were you awake the whole time? I, I got the, the, the second night I did get to sleep. Uh, I got some sleep on the first night, uh, maybe like an hour. It was pretty calm out there, though, for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Once I got on the top of the coffin, I was good. I, I, you know, the, on, the, on the floor where the beanbag was not so good. But on the coffee, yeah, he, he got the right. primo spot. He got to lay on the bed. Oh, <laughs> he got nice. brought him an air mattress. Oh, he got to pump the thing up for him. Throw the fans on him so he's not too hot. So we had great weather though last year. It wasn't hot. We had great weather. Well, you yeah, you can't beat that. Wet at night. Yeah, do it's gonna happen. No doubt about that. So after the captains meeting for then then the rest, then Thursday is, is so fit. then Thursday. So we do two captains meeting. So Wednesday's the offshore. Uh, they get to what two and a half, almost three days to fish. Uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. Well, Thursday, 4 to 6 is inshore registration. Right, right. And then 6 p.m. is the captain's meeting. Um, and they get they are released to fish on Friday at 4 p.m. Okay. So they yeah. have a full 24 hours to fish. Right. Where last year, it's it was less. A little was less, less than, than that. that right? Yeah, a little less than that. Uh, the reason why we we did that, did it this that way this year was uh, a lot of those guys have to work. Right. And they don't want to drive their boat up to Hooters right. and then drive, you know, do all that. So it was just kind of easier, cleaner to do it that way. Um, same thing with them. We're going to uh, Jersey Mike's going to give subs out nice. for that. So you guys have something to eat when you go out there. And you actually fished the inshore. I did. And how was your experience? It was good. It was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, so you're most most of the time guys who fish inshore have spots they mm -hmm. go to. They run to here and there. And um it was a lot of fun because you know you just you're you, there, you have so many different you got the different species you're going after you got uh, and one thing I didn't do was the was the trash can or oh, trash yes. bucket whatever the trash can uh, slam yeah slam yeah. <laughs> but it's like uh, it's great because you can, you can catch all the fish you that 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 may not be the what you're looking for right load them in a bucket and you can go out there right. and, and win that as well so so not that like I know anything about fish but from what I've learned in the last two years so that. Inshore is different because the inshore, besides the trash can stuff, is all catch and release. Right. So what you'll do when you register is I was just going to say, did they weigh their fish in? No, they did not. It's that. all it's so you, when you when yeah. you register, you'll get a ruler, and, and you have a, an app, and you have to download an app. I yeah. think it's the iAngler app. It is. Um, and, and I know some people are not technologically savvy. <laughs> So we'll walk you through that when you come to register. It's easy. I did it. It was. I mean, I could have done it if I yeah. needed to. Yeah. It was. It, it was easy. Um. So everything. So I think it was snook, redfish, and trout was. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the same categories this year. So basically, what you do, you catch one of those fish, you put it up against the ruler, you take a picture, you upload it into the app, and it goes right. And then to it you. goes right to us. Yeah. They, the app has an algorithm, and they calculate it right away. The trash can slam is. The only thing that you have to weigh in, it's like catfish and like, I don't, I guess like garbage anything. fish. Yeah, anything, anything, anything that you don't you have catch. to throw yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm <laughs> pretending like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, well, I guess we, we should talk about the categories in the offshore too, yes. right? So the main yep. category, the main winnings, if you win the tournament, it's the biggest American red snapper, but there's also Calcutta's for tuna mahi and grouper. I correct, believe, Jess? Yes, that's correct. Yes. 
Yeah, so separate Calcuttas that are on the yeah, side the for the biggest right. grouper, biggest mahi, biggest tuna. Will you explain what a Calcutta is? Because I had to have you explain that to me originally. And yeah, it's just like a side bet. So all, the original the entry fee for the tournament goes towards the American two biggest American Red Snappers. But then on the side, there is a side bet for each category. So you can enter each individual category, and then I believe you can enter you can enter all of them if you want to. I think we have Wahoo on there too. So you have Wahoo, Wahoo, Mahi, yeah. Tuna, so, and Biggest yep. Grouper. Um, and I think that I believe the grouper cannot be a Warsaw, um, that's grouper. so that, yeah, that yeah. kind of, that's a whole different category, but yeah, so that's a separate deal, separate entry fee. Um, I believe, what was it? 50 bucks or hundred bucks it was last a time per fish, per fish, yeah. per, per Calcutta. So it's $600 to enter the offshore general, uh, fee. Right. And like, like Trey said, it's, uh, we actually did two. We did the American red snapper, the two biggest American red snapper mm -hmm. and then i think we had like a general snapper category as well okay uh and then we had the calcuttas so oh, there was a mystery fish too. and there was i we announced the mystery yeah. fish at the captain's meeting so you could that was an african african pompano i believe yeah which it probably won't be that again this year but so. wasn't there also wasn't there also like just like the biggest fish that's not on the list or something because i thought we, we brought maybe. in a barracuda maybe yeah yeah, a, oh, there's know. a bunch of cool options, yeah. whatever yeah. you want to do. Usually everybody does all of them because you're out there. You might as well do it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You're, if you're catching fish and you say, like, man, I wish I had done that. Just I, It's worth being, yeah. in the, being right. on it right, right away. Masoni, where did you guys leave out of uh, when you guys fished uh, last year? Out of Pops. We were we went out of, oh, cool. and we just kind of went north up up, to, up towards um, Van Wazel up in that area. Cool. Up on, by, nice. So it was, yeah, we, we kind of hit a bunch of different spots that some guys had, had, had some ideas on. And it was it was like, I will tell you this, I think that the guys that went and fished the night before got a little bit, more, a little bit, a little bit better, a little head start. So that's why I think now it's, right. it's going to be. I think everybody's going to do the same thing because it was a little bit. You know, you, who, who you catch a captain? tide. Uh, Derek Nelson was our captain. Okay. Yeah. Did, so. did he name his boat, or do you still have that name? I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever it is, it'll be the same thing too. So the other. Well, I would say the same thing though. I would say the same thing. Like John, you would agree. The first night was our best night by far, and we almost didn't oh, even yeah. fish the first night. Yeah, no doubt. When we first got there, we 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 pulled up the big ones. Yeah, we had a good day. Um, so just to recap, the entry fees for the offshore six hundred dollars. The side bets or the Calcuttas are a hundred dollars yeah. each. Hundred dollars each. So the more boats we get, the bigger the prize money right, is. Right, right. All of that money, all those entry fees, go back to the anglers. I think. I think maybe we keep ten percent of it just for cover some costs. Um, the big checks. The big checks. We have big <laughs> checks. Trey won a couple big checks. <laughs> Yeah, um, but we got we got first place Wahoo with a fourteen pound Wahoo. I've never even seen anything like that. It was really really small, but we, we were the only ones that caught a Wahoo hey, there you the whole go. day. So it is. great, yeah. we won. So the more boats, the bigger the payouts are. Uh, I think that helps attract a lot of because, uh, I mean, how much does gas cost to go fishing? I think, <laughs> I think the gas. I think the, his winnings maybe paid for like maybe a, paid for a the quarter gas. of the gas probably right yeah. um, it didn't but it was good okay good <laughs> we just expect you to be there and everything we do um yes. and then the inshore i believe is 125 an angler yes it is and well, same it thing last year. same yeah. thing we we pay out uh per category per category on that as well i think we had some cal some side things going on we did like alternate jackpots um but all all of that information uh and registrations on our website www.suncoastsnapperslapper.com <laughs> that's right and like i said and, and all and for all of everybody who's just thinking about it it is a it is a very fun event and then it culminates with a with a great setup at marina jacks for the weigh-in yeah so we have um when we were talking about doing this originally we wanted to do it in venice um and we we talked to a bunch of places and it just the vision we had for it there was no place in venice that was set up to handle that no. um because we were gonna go big or go not home basically room. not yeah. enough room. not enough room right. and then if you in a lot of not sometimes people weren't really quite sure they wanted to step into that, at that right a hundred percent and marina jacks does a really good job they have a certified scale there they run tournaments mm -hmm. out of out of there all the time um this year so the weigh-in is going to be from one to four we'll have a, like a dockside party going from 12 to 6 p.m we have uh dj tony the party Accardi, another venice alumni there we go who will be uh djing uh throughout and we have maverick johnson on board again uh uh emceeing the event he did a great job did last awesome year. last year he, another yeah, he venice did a good alum. Job. so um 
everybody be down there. We want if even if you're not fishing, we want everybody to come down and hang out. We'll have giveaways and prizes and stuff. Yeah, you had you um, had door prizes and ra- uh, silent auctions, silent auction the whole things. thing. Yeah. So, so and more more info on that will be coming out in the next uh, you know next couple weeks, running up to the tournament. So uh, it's a great time. Weather. You know, it's always a factor, but yeah. but we don't w- worry about that around here. You know what? <laughs> weather is, the, is what it is. It, but you're gonna you're gonna have flashes of weather no matter what that time of the year. It could be a little thunderstorm here and there, little things happening. But I think everybody's pretty accustomed to that. They're, yeah, they're not gonna get. That's not a big deterrent. That's right. for sure. And I think that um, with this tournament as well, beyond the fact the reach that it is obviously a charitable event. This this American Snapper tournament, I mean, that I've looked as I've looked into it more and more at how how big a deal it is. This fills a void uh, in the fi- in a lot of big fishermen's sort of uh, categories yeah. that they look for. And I didn't realize how it was a big it's a big deal. The governor announces this thing. It's like it's a big announcement when this when this Red Sna- American Red Snapper season opens up. So a lot of guys are you know a lot of fisher fishermen are finding out more and more. I think about like you said, and it'll it it could grow even bigger as time goes on. Yeah, I didn't know anything about that. And, and really, Trey had when we were talking about doing this, uh, I picked his brain obviously because he him and and his brother Clay they they love to fish, and he he had rec- suggested that because like you said there was no. Uh, tournaments like that on the on our coast yeah it, it's kind of weird there's been i mean in my four or five years offshore fishing in the tournaments there's been you know three or four that popped up and then before registration happened they all like canceled tournaments which has been kind of weird you know, a couple out of palmetto and some out of bradenton and sarasota and so um when jess was able and rebecca were able to put this thing together um like john said it definitely filled filled a void and i don't think there's any other american red tournament on the west coast of florida um, you know, all the way up to the Panhandle and all the way down to, you know, the Keys or Naples. So um, it's one of a kind and uh, it's a lot of fun. And one of the things we hope to happen with 941 Sports Zone, you doing it here right now, is that this might get out to a further reach. That's, and yeah. you, might, you might, I mean, if you, get, if you get two more and two more and two more, you're looking at something that could be really, really, you know, massive at some that's, point. In that, time. That's the goal because uh, we want it, we really want it to be about the fishing tournament. Yeah. You know, there's a cause behind it. You know, we raise money for the Venice High football program. But um, I think we have uh, a, a, mo- a monster on our hands that will uh, yeah. grow into something uh, something good here in <laughs> yeah. for, for years to come. No, and I, like I said, and just uh, overall, like I said, I, everything I've seen of it, um, even like you said, I, I, you, I you mentioned the, the, the sponsor uh, is there? A sp- oh, so that's a, another thing. We've had we have such great partnerships with everybody in town. Pops is going to host our sponsor party again. Uh, it's VIP. It's a, excuse me, invite only. So you have to you have to be, be a sponsor. A sponsor. Yeah. We will still take sponsors if you would like to sponsor That's the right. <laughs> plenty of time. No, no, plenty, plenty of time, time to do it. Yes. And that and, of time. I, and I'll tell you something. Everything that was done last year, um, the, all the venues that that were involved and who was picked. Where it was it was first class. Mm-hmm. I, I I said I had, I had the good fortune to get to be at pretty much right. all of them except for the for the for the captain's meeting for the uh, offshore. Yeah, the, but it was well, great. The, well, the sponsor party was great. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. They had yep. great food. That was awesome. Pops is hosting it again. We're, we're they kind of um, if everybody's anybody's familiar with the location when you walk into the restaurant they have all those tiki tables, right? Uh, fire pit tables on the left. So they kind of give that give us that whole section. We're gonna have live music out there. Um, open bar. Yeah, we have some signature drinks. That would that and that was all cool and it's funny because you know you, you meet the sponsors are coming in. We're all meeting I, from people I didn't know and they're like, this is fantastic. I mean, so they just the fact that they got that out of it as well as the as the as the uh, all the advertising and other thing they get everything else they get off right. of it. It was it was really I said that kicked off everything so nicely and then people were more more inclined to hey let's go to the up to Marina Jackson have a little get together right. there and that was as, equally as fun up there they did they I mean you're right you know we'd hoped you had hoped at least that you were going to find something that would, could have been a little local more local right. to the situation but they're just prepared for you it you just have they to just you kind of have it. to it do really it. it you have to go with it the best option so. And so we got, we're going to, well, let's do this. Let's take a break real quick because we got to make sure we can keep Trey on the Zoom call here. We'll take a quick break, come back here at Douglas Jeep and keep on talking a little bit more about the fishing tournament, wrap up a few things detail wise, and then we'll get into some sports as well. So with that, we'll take our first break of the night and come back here on the 941 Sports Zone in a few minutes.
941 Sports Zone, and we'll continue our conversation from a little earlier uh, regarding the fishing tournament. And I think we were going to step into um, if there's any deadlines to sign up and, and whatnot. So no deadlines to sign up. Um, you have until 6 p.m. if you're going to fish the offshore tournament, 6 p.m. Wednesday, June 21st, uh, to register, pay your money, do the captain's meeting. And then if you're going to do the inshore, you have until Thursday, June 22nd at 6 p.m. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Um, and yeah, so so if you're if you're waffling, looking for some friends or whatever, you have up until that point mm -hmm. to get up to, in both cases, the Hooters on those nights. Yep. Head up there and you register right there and you're good to go and um, uh, get your, you get your, uh, getting a bucket you this year? You get a year? captain's bucket, which will have, will be filled with goodies. Which was probably the most popular thing I've <laughs> ever seen given away at any event anywhere. They, to they told me like about these buckets and I said, it's a bucket, it's plastic. <laughs> yeah, like what is so special about it? And everybody wants one. I had the rope so, handle, kind of, there yeah. was something all about it. had a they, handle on the bottom, so it's easy to like carry there around. Was, there was all kinds of things. They were, I mean, yeah. I never seen grown men act that way over so, a bucket, so. We'll have plenty of buckets. <laughs> um, but if you want to pre-register, go, the, go to their website. Um, SuncoastNapperSlapper.com. You can register on there, pay online, or and or, or mail it into into the uh, PO box, which all that information's on there anyway. Yeah, so. and that was last year, and as of this year, I mean, you're you've gotten kudos to both you and Rebecca have gotten this thing where it is pretty seamlessly easy. I want to say to get, get to get involved and to get in, registered and everything else. It's just it, it's not like you would think. It's again with the, with the app for the inshore guys and everything that's going on to be able to launch from your backyard yeah. if you want to. She, just she amazing amount. She of stuff. has it down to a science, yeah. and I mean it's just like pushing buttons for her. So I just I just sit back and let her do everything. Yeah. So again, so if if you're out there and I, we were all sort of testimonial here for what it was last year and what it'll be this year. Uh, obviously, it'll be it'd be just that much better for one more year's experience to it. But it, as, based on last year, you'll guaranteed if you're an angler, you'll really, really enjoy this. And especially if you're an offshore angler, to get the opportunity to be involved in, a, in an American Red Snapper tournament is a is a huge deal. Yeah, we're looking to, uh, forward to a big event, so I'm I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, Trey, I hope you're excited to fish in it again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there was there was 21 boats at the crossway this year. Um, I would imagine. Are they doing the slam this year? I have Just, not heard. You know? I have no idea. We, I can't get a answer on that. Yeah, I haven't heard much about Old Salt, the slam, or Galati's tournament. Um, so, and I, uh, so I would imagine people are going to be ready to fish, and uh, it's com it's going to be competitive, and it'll be bl it'll blast. So excited. Who who is the, out of you and your brother? Who's the better fisherman? Do you think? Clay. Clay. Yeah, yeah, because Clay's I gotta, got it dialed. Yeah, of course it's Clay because I gotta bait his hooks. It's like, <laughs> it's like two verse, it's like two verse one. I gotta bait his hooks. No. Like oh, hook. so he has yeah. an, an unfair advantage. Yeah, so it's like two verse oh, one. Gotcha. Of course. Okay. Why well, don't you Clay fishing is hooks? really hard. I mean, one hundred percent. He doesn't get out as much because you know the kids in school right. and everything. So um, he fishes really hard when he gets a chance to. Yeah, and he does him and Dean, hard. they do an awesome job. He does go hard. He he uh, he's done a great job. Uh, he's another person that. And really, all of our people on our committee. We have a big committee that that's helped with this tournament. It's not yeah. just Rebecca and myself, um, but he is one of the people behind the scenes that really got a lot of sponsors and not a lot of new people that we couldn't even reach uh, on board to support this event. So, uh, big shout out to him as well. Yeah, he's and if, again, all the sponsors, like anything you do, they they are the heartbeat of what mm -hmm. of what makes it operate properly. And of course, once again, sitting here in Douglas Jeep. Uh, stepping up and and, and, and you know I, I mean sometimes it, it's the recognition of knowing that uh, other things have gone well in the past that they've sponsored and, and and so to be engaged and involved in this fishing tournament probably just suits them the properly. Yeah, they they are great. They're just great. Uh, Greg Douglas is a great person to you know uh, partner with and everything they've done. You know I think they do everything first class and we do everything first class, so it's a pretty good uh, match. Yeah, no doubt. So once again, the twenty first of June the 24th all of those events in between the fishing as well and then culminating with the weigh-in at, at, at marina jack so if you're interested by all means go to the website uh www.suncoastsnapperslapper.com dot com yep and go there and, and you can register there or if you're more like to come by and uh join the festivities on on either night at hooters you can do that as well yep and if you you know need to buy a jeep and register for the fishing term you can come down here and do that also I'm actually bring coach hunter down tomorrow oh to really buy a vehicle oh well can we get him to sign <laughs> sign up to fish the tournament coach hunter 
why not? Oh, I don't, I don't think he has <laughs> okay. a boat. Oh, shucks. <laughs> it's funny, someone was asking me about the fish tournament. He said, well, I don't, what, can I just show up and pay my money? And, and, and I'm like, well, it's not like golf where you just hop yeah. on with a foursome. Like, yeah. you hop on gotta, someone's boat. You gotta, you gotta have hey, a boat. Everybody. <laughs> we don't want, we don't, we, we, What's for lunch? I've seen some of the people drive the golf tournaments at our golf tour. I don't need to like rent out boats for people. No, to no, drive no, those no. Things, you don't so. want to do no that. Pontoon no pontoon boats. No, no pontoon boats, not at please. All. Not at all. So, uh, Trey, uh, since we're, 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 so we, we're good, we wrapped up the Snapper Slapper I think so, Slapper yeah. Thing. I don't have – am I missing anything? I think uh, – I want to see everybody there. Good. Big turnout. We were just talking about our golf games. We can tack over to that. So, uh, you know – Perfect. You know, uh, we, we all sort of – I mean, we dabble in the game, yeah. maybe a little, some more than others. But uh, I know you're getting better. Uh, how, how was your golf game these days? I still stink, but I still be just in the regular, so that's all that really matters. I don't know about that. Sometimes we don't keep score. Well, so. that's fine. Sometimes, sometimes it's just about the. This is about being out there and True, with nature. Yeah. No, I, I know I, one person that for sure could be is Peacock. That's guaranteed. I, no questions asked. Well, I'm, I, Done deal. Listen, I'm ready to take someone's money. I'll take and that I, bet. And I, and I, you know, we can do this whenever. I, mean, I haven't played in three years. That's fine. You just got a, a couple of warm up swings. I did play today. A couple deep I took bends. Justice out today. Was teaching her how to hit and. I was pretty good. I was, I'm not, I think I got better. <laughs> you think you I got, got better? Yeah, I think I got sometimes, better by not playing. Sometimes that happens. You need a break. Yeah, I, just, I think better. I just was thinking about how I'm going to teach her, and I got better during that process. Did you Did you go out and buy her like a whole like a little set? Of I clubs? borrowed them from Coach Wideline. Oh, okay, all nice. right. He's very a very nice. good golfer. He is very good. Yeah, and so is his son. So you know, I've played golf with Coach Peacock before, mm -hmm. and yeah. I was getting ready to beat him and he picked up at the end and he's like no you didn't beat me because i didn't finish the round <laughs> well they so said there you go it's a technicality DQ. yeah <laughs> if you want to play like that that's fine <laughs> it didn't finish uh, didn't like, finish did not just finish. like a rainstorm it would have had to yeah. come back the next under day cons cons <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah. all right well while you were here obviously here uh, break into a little, to a little sports conversation, sure. which we, we kind of do here at 941 Sports Zone. And uh, since we've kind of gone through the local side of things, and really this is the time of the year that can be a little difficult, you know, with the, we had John Reynolds on, we had Rich Spitaleri on, they're like, yeah, we're kind of hunting for, hunting for stories. There's not much going on when the high school sports sort of settle down locally. But uh, college sports are still on the run here. We still got college baseball and college Go softball. Go Gators. That, that was, that's the, the, the Gators uh, in their, in their, uh, their region one today to go ahead and advance to the super regional against South Carolina. Uh, I think they're the lone team from the state who have advanced uh, because I know Correct. Miami lost to Texas. Uh, just uh, I think that Mikey was Robertson yesterday. still playing. He is doing yeah. well, starting is in the center he, field and so doing that. real well. He's local local product and uh, he's um, he's he's got he, I think he's a reliable reliable uh, fielder and his hitting has become better and better. He's he bats ninth, but a lot of times uh, with a DH, like the like the, it's like the second is like the second, second leadoff lead guy. Yeah, yeah, that's a hundred percent right. So a lot of that there, and he brings speed and and, and intelligence to the bay pass. So he's doing a good job. So uh, looking for the Gators to move forward, and then the. Uh, Everybody's been talking about it. Rich and I talked about it last week, but the the the, the women's uh, World Series for for softball, the whole tournament leading up to it, has been extremely entertaining. I mean, in regards to the the the, what the, the sort of the atmosphere that's out there, um, and as far as the, the level of play as well. I don't know how you guys feel. And Gal, I haven't. I have not watched any of that to be honest unfortunately i'm unprepared to speak well, about, about those things but again but again i, I think at, at the the it, it, you see it more and more as as time has gone on that it, it it is the sport that, that and volleyball that really is uh the most i would say uh and maybe gymnastics as well too mm -hmm. that gymnastics yeah lot, they get a lot of, they get a lot of press for the, for the ladies uh playing but it's a uh, it's been it's been an interesting situation and there's a, there's a obviously a bigger story with that with oklahoma being undefeated for for 50 games now they won in a row wow. two years wow. and they've no they way made it to, yeah really? made it to the semifinals uh as of today they beat uh, stanford and now they're going to be uh i think they're facing florida state which is where i was headed with that florida state uh is in this in the semifinals as well i think that's where they're headed but either way what's uh, the record uh who oklahoma no the most wins in a row they have it Oh. Oklahoma got it. I was so say, whatever that record was, that's the, where they're going to lose. They, 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 just they, like, they, just like the they jumped the hurdle. Race. And they, the game they did it in, John, was we talked about last week, uh, down in the bottom of the seventh inning, two strikes, two outs to, a, to, a, to their catcher, who's a star player, but had a few injuries. 
and she's a three run homer to tie it. Wow. Holy God. And then they walked off and wow. went in the So what's, it what's the, what's the uh, timeline? How many more? Uh, yeah, semis. So, so what happens is they'll finish this week or okay. this weekend. What happened? I think, I think that once they get the two final teams, I think they play a best of three. Okay. And then that's how they culminate that. And then in the, the men's side, uh, they're down to 16 teams. Mm -hmm. They do the super regionals so where they match up the two teams that make it. And then it goes down to eight and eight go to, go to Wichita and play. So that's kind of how we, it works. We got some big news this week. You did? That's right. I meant, that's right. We did have local. I'm sorry. You have something you wanted to say. Yes. Well, no, I'm just saying we had some big news this week. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Charles Lester yeah. um, transferred over to us from Riverview High School. Yeah, and I know that was definitely a big story. Actually, a national story. Uh, yeah, and at I think some he's, point he was, uh, I want to say, number 13 recruit in the country, number two cornerback. And you know, a lot of a lot of talk and mumbling about you know um, why or how he's coming. And uh, you know, one thing I like to say is, is I'm never going to apologize for having a, a good program. Yeah. And uh, we take it as a compliment that elite players want to play for an elite team. Sure. Against elite competition. So Trey's a father, and. How old is Jackson right now, Trey? Eight. Eight. So eventually, he's going to be in. High, he's going to be going into high school, and yeah. whatever his path is, you know, maybe maybe he's a baseball player or maybe he's a football player. We don't really know yet because he's kind of too young to figure out what he likes and, and what he's what his path is going to be. But whenever he figures out, I'm sure you as a father are going to try to put him in the best possible situation for whatever he's involved in. And myself as an athlete, I would want to play against the best competition that I possibly could play against right. you know, every year, especially in high school when you're getting evaluated. Right, exactly. But you're going to put your son, you as a, you as a father, are going to put your son in the best situation that, that you feel is for him. And, of course. And it's just starting to bother me that people are, you know, oh, well, Venice is doing this, Venice is doing that. Venice isn't doing anything. Venice is being Venice. Venice is yeah. working these kids hard playing tough competition and we are demanding excellence from our players uh we have great coaches not saying that other people don't have great coaches but at the same time if if a parent sees like hey i want my child involved in that program because this is his path and that's what they decide to do don't make it a negative on us right because someone decides to do that look look inward well why there's a reason they're leaving somewhere why right why are they leaving right there i mean so everyone always wants to well they're doing this they're doing that and they must be doing this and that's not the case we're doing what we do right and people want to be involved in that we take as a compliment yeah no way you're exactly right and trey you, you you've said it yourself you want to play at the highest level but the most competition and i know that in your recruiting process you you committed relatively early compared to the way kids do it these days but that, I think they told you, go win a championship. Go, go play the best teams you can play. Go, go, go learn how to win. And that's really what they, they want to see from, from the kids at, at the high school level. Yeah, I mean, I would say back when I was there at Venice, we didn't play anywhere as close. I mean, I would, you guys probably had the best, hardest schedule of the last five years well, it was than any other team in the country. Football, the football landscape has kind of changed since you were in high school. Now, now there's more of, you know, there's these super, these super teams. And we've talked about this a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. There's these there's super teams. There are and, super teams. You know, when you were in high school, you know, the best team around was Manatee High School and Lakeland High School. Yeah. You know, those yeah. were the those were the elite programs. Um and Plant High School. Yeah. Another, Plant, you know, Plant those, was on the rise. Three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And and now nowadays in Florida, now you got St. Thomas, you have um all the, all the American Heritages. American Heritage, you have uh Miami Central, Miami Northwestern, um, Coco is an yeah, elite program. Absolutely elite. You know, so Lakeland the, again. Lakeland came again right. last Lakeland, year. Lakeland rolls every, up every couple of years. Right. You know, Lakeland will put together something, but um, it's kind of changed a little bit. And then you have the superpowers nationally, like IMG. Right. You know, there was no Which IMG. Is right, right in the our backyard. You know, and right. then you have Saint, like the Saint Francis is and the um, um, modern day. Modern day. And, Back when Trey was the, in high school, it was. Um, the team that had the 150 game win streak. Oh yeah, De La Salle. De La Salle, right. 
And then you so, have you have Bishop Gorman out in Las Vegas. Right, they, they have they mean so you can start naming them off. And I think that's we you know we've we've mentioned that before that sometimes those particular schools I mean they've they've almost reached a level where it's almost they need to be in another category. And, and, and in some cases, like IMG doesn't even have a category at this right. point, but that's that of their own choice, and that's fine with it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, social media, um, TV now, high school, high school sports are all, all over the, the four-letter network and everywhere else they're at. They're, just, they're, they're out there. It's, it's, they see everything. They, 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 they look around. They have options, and they look at it and say, what's the best, what's the best position I can put myself into? And if it happens to be Venice or Charlotte or whatever they think it may be or whoever it could be, then that's where they're going to go and that's where their parents are going to make sure and, they get the best. And whatever program they're in, for some reason, they feel like they're not being provided with what they need. It could be, right. You're never quite sure what the motivation is. But again, if, they're, if, they're, if, there's, a, if there's a landing point, then there's a reason why. And that's usually because there's something that's going to give them the best option to be the best they can be right. what, they're, what they're trying to do. And well, that's, all, well, that's all sports. Well, we're real excited. Well, good, we're, we're, and we're, rightfully we're so. And he's a great young man, and he's going to be a heck of a football player for us, and I'm excited to coach and I know, him and be around. I know we'll, we'll, he'll, 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 he'll get the best from you guys as well, as right. well. so that, that's another good thing uh, as well. Um, with that, we'll take a quick break here again because we can break into something else uh, right after this. We'll, we'll take a break here, come back, and we'll tack into some other things that we wanted to talk about uh, about the NBA, the NHL, and uh, spring football leagues uh, – like the USFL and XFL. I want some opinions from you guys and gal about this as well. So uh, we'll be back here at Douglas Jeep after this short break. See you back here shortly. Welcome back to Douglas Jeep as well. Jessica Pacino, John Peacock, and Trey Burton here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to something that's a little more mainstream outside of fishing that we've been going on for a little bit. But there are two uh, two two major championships being competed for right now: the NBA and the NHL Finals. Uh, and uh, we'll start with basketball. And Trey, I know you're a basketball fan. You play a lot of basketball in high school. Um, Heat Nuggets tied up one one in the series right now. Uh, I, I predicted the Nuggets would win in five. It looks like it might not be happening, but uh, I think they're still the favorite to win. How, how do you feel about the series going so far? Uh, I mean, I think Jokic is a bad boy. He's unbelievable. He? He's a lot of fun to watch. He's so unique and special. I was, I'm was i a big Embiid fan, and I was glad to see Embiid win the MVP, but, I mean, it's hard to hard to say that Jokic didn't, should, didn't deserve it or should not have won it, in my opinion. But... Uh, both games were very pretty competitive. I mean, last last night's game was very competitive. Um, I I just like to see good basketball. Um, I love Jimmy Butler. Um, I love I love Eric Spolstra. You know, so happy for everything he's done down there in that city and all the rumors and all the stuff he had to deal with and whatever. And obviously, the Gator you you Haslam is there. So right, uh, it's, he's like, I just like 35, to see good ball. Thirty fifth year on the bench. He's he's like yeah. He he went yeah. from a guy he never left him never left the Miami Heat and he's he's graying and he's he's still out there. So it's and I know he's a basically a coach at this point but nonetheless he's uh doing a heck of a job you're right about eric spolster though i mean he's i mean he's 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 got a hall of fame career right now and you never would have yeah. known that or thought of that you know back in the day when it was he was waiting because lebron was there and because you know uh all the other yeah, what's his face uh d wade and Bosch, and, Bosh, and, all those yeah, guys, Chris yeah. Bosh and all those guys so yeah definitely uh john i know you uh had you had a lakers pick Last time we're here, and that sort of you know yeah, didn't, crash didn't, landed. Didn't so, are you, have well. you have you tacked a different different direction? Well, I, I gotta like the Heat. You know, I mean, being in Florida, mm -hmm. you know, I thought they played well mm -hmm. last night. You know, they came back. They were down. They're down fifteen at one point. Yeah, well, uh, in the, late, the second half. Late, yeah, definitely. Well, no, well, late in the second quarter, they were down fifteen, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they brought it to six right before half, and then they came back and won. So, um, I'm I'm gonna go with the Heat in seven. Okay, and and they won it in. 
Denver. Yeah. And and they won it in Boston in seven when they when they won, when they beat Boston too. Right. So they're not they're not they're not ashamed or afraid to win on the road. That is for sure. And then they've had a little trouble at home, but I think it's just the style of play they have. And they're going to just, I mean, if they're on their game, they're playing their defense right. I mean, they're, they're, they are a tough out. What, what was the, what's the, on the free throw line, behind the free throw line in Denver? What is that? The, the number 5280 or yeah. whatever? I don't know. I, I, Do you know I, what that is, Trey? No. Is it the area code? No. no. It's, it's 5280. So it's got it. Oh, five two zero. Oh, it's they oh. know that that's mile high. That's oh, <laughs> yeah, that what it is. Yeah. See, you say it enough times, you're like, does oh. the ball? Does the? I was wondering this. So they're are they high altitude? Where yes, they're, they're a mile high. Does the ball travel different? Okay, you, did you play in Denver, Trey? Yeah, well, I know no, the football does. Uh, you, well, it has to, right? Right. You kick you kick a sixty three yard field goal there, like it's nothing compared <laughs> but to what about anywhere else. The basketball <laughs> it has to. I mean, yeah. you still have the lungs, so the problem there, breathing yeah. and everything as well, so it has to. Yeah, I mean, I that, mean that's got to be an advantage Miami. Well, no, advantage Nuggets because they – Oh, Nuggets at home? Yeah, yeah. But they home. lost that advantage right. last night. Right. So now it's got to be advantage Miami. they got to come to a sea level and, and they're they're suck in the heavy humidity. air. Right. The humidity is going to get there. They're going to go, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're gonna, and they're going to shoot short. A lot, of, a lot of short the throw, balls a lot heavier. Of, yeah, a lot of short, <laughs> short shots. You're used to that, aren't you? <laughs> Just a right? little tiny bit short. That's all it is. Right. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, opinions or, or predictions for you on the, I mean, on, the, on the NBA? I mean, I I guess I'll go with the Heat just because they're from Florida. But go. I stopped watching basketball when the Knicks lost. So, <laughs> so you didn't watch any of the playoffs? <laughs> I watched a little bit. No, they, they made it to the, 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 the yeah, Eastern yeah, yeah, okay. Conference uh, semifinals, I believe. Uh, they lost to the Heat. Yeah. Another Heat victim. Uh, but no, I think it's going to be entertaining. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes seven. And uh, but you said about Jokic. I mean, just a just fun to watch. I mean, I think that yeah. I, I went. I was sort of lost my way with basketball, but then Steph Curry kind of reeled me back in with the things he did. That was just you know, un, just the the shooting, the passing, the kind of the, the hustle he does. And then you see Jokic, and he's doing things that I can't. You know, they're trying to say he's like this guy. He's like that guy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I can imagine, imagine people in Boston would be, ter- would be aggravated for me to say this, but he's got a lot of Larry Bird yeah, in him. I agree. He's got just them, bigger, just bigger, like big, like, like bigger size wise. Right. But he he has the ability to shoot from the outside. He sees the court. He re- he rebounds when he needs to. He's just he's available for whatever it may be. He's he's a definitely a unique unique basketball well, when, player. When we're watching this next game. When's the next game? Uh, t- is it tomorrow? tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Right. Or, or, tomorrow yeah. or Wednesday. One or the other. I know it's so it'll be the day before this airs. Yes. All right. So just think back. It'll be a lot of short shots. A okay. Lot, a lot of balls hitting the front of the rim. All right. So so if I if that happens, that that needs to go that needs to go viral. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that needs to go. Joke kick, joke kick, You know, a lot of short shots this week. Goes goes three for Wednesday. fifteen. Yeah, all everything on Everything's the front of the iron. The front of, front of the rim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I'm going to tackle- wonder what the what the over under on air balls is for the game. I wow. think it just hits the front of the rim, so it's not that big. I mean, because you got you got two. You got the 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 humidity in Miami is going to be thick, you and a- then you got the, the there's no mile high air. It's gotta be gotta be a lot of short shots. Maybe maybe make sure that that the locker room doesn't have good enough good air that night too. Really make <laughs> yeah. it stuffy. Like Miami Northwestern. Yeah. <laughs> the, air, the air's not working. Oh, yeah. the air's yeah. not. That was hot. But yeah, that's in our contract too, by the way. Like the air has to work when we come down this time. <laughs> All right, so that's good. That's good. It's in the contract. Uh, so go over to the NHL. Golden Knights. Panthers have got one game in. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are up one nothing. Uh, Really talented team. Uh, you watch them play. Panthers came in again, just like the Heat, an eight seed, and they have been um, they have been sort of mowing through some very good teams in the East. They beat the the, the best team in the league starting off with, and then swept uh, a very good Carolina team. So uh, we'll see what happens. But Trey, you follow hockey at all, or are you sort of just a- yeah? I'm a big big hockey guy. Yeah. I, I can honestly say I've never watched a Vegas Knights game. Um, just because of the time difference, yeah. but I watch every Lightning game and a good amount of the Florida games, so um, pretty well versed in it. Yeah, well, the, the, and the, and Vegas, Vegas is um, a lot like the Lightning, a lot like the Lightning. Really? Yeah, they I mean they have they have a lot of the same. They're 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 not like the the multiple pass kind of team, but they when they get going, they're fast and they good goalie. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I thought that was going to be their their Achilles heel, the, good goalie, but no experience. 
and mm. and but he's so far. I mean, I don't know if you know it, but the, Vegas has blocked the most shots in the league this year from the from wow. the from the defenseman and whatnot. So they they do a great job in front of the net for him, so he doesn't see as many shots. But he's he's held up so far in the playoffs. So. Uh, nice. Again, not that pedigree like Vasilevsky is and whatnot, but but a guy who can definitely he's he's serviceable. There's no doubt about that. Probably the worst two markets for NHL, right? I would imagine Vegas being like the year, second year or third year. Yeah, I mean it's it's different. And in Miami, it's tough. And, and but they're just like I said, it's it just goes to show that uh, uh, hockey has become a, a you know North American sport, and yeah. you're seeing the Vegas and the and the and the, seeing Tampa, Florida. Um, a lot of other teams, Nashville, a couple years ago. So you're seeing mm-hmm. uh, the sort of the, this this route taking place, and it's been good for the it's been good for the for the league because I mean, obviously, more revenue they can get, the better. Yeah. Uh, any opinions on hockey? I'm, I'm going to go the same thing. I'm going to go with the Panthers since in Florida. I, I still think they're they're, they're good. They're really good. They are good. And Jess, you're gonna... I, I stopped watching when the Rangers. Left. <laughs> <laughs> off off yeah. she went on off. that one. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. So anyway, I got a, I'm a quick topic since we're all football f- football folks here. Um, didn't bring it up before, but it is sort of kind of coming to uh, a conclusion here relatively soon. But the spring football leagues, professional leagues, with the USFL and the XFL um, rebooting this year, and maybe I think the USFL had rebooted last year. Um, opinions on it? I mean, Trey, give, give me your opinion as far as from a player perspective. What do you think uh, their usefulness is, and do you think that they're doing it the proper way? Yeah, I think they're 30 years too late on something like this. I think there has been there's a need for um, another opportunity for a lot of guys, and I, I don't. Who knows how many guys are actually going to be able to make it to the league, you know, and get a chance to play? But I always thought there was um, there's always late bloomers. There's always guys that have injuries that you know are undrafted or lower draft picks where teams have no ties to them, and I just get rid of them just because there's no point of keeping them on the team. Um, but I think. It's a long time coming. It should have happened a long time ago. But I do also think it's probably the worst timing for it because I think there's going to be a lot more kids staying in college with yeah. NIL and their opportunity to get paid because they're going to be making more money in uh, through NIL than uh, they will be making you know, playing these uh, USFL and um, XFL leagues. So uh, I think they got some good coaches, and it's all going to be about development. You know, I think yeah. the quality of the game is actually pretty good. You know, it's fun to watch and entertaining, um, but. I do think the NFL needed something like this a long time ago to try out some of these new rules or these new you know, different things that they wanted to do, you know, game wise. And um, I, I overall, it would be good, but I just you know wish it was a lot earlier and it wasn't right right as NIL was you know at, at the hottest point it's been. Right, right, John. Are, are any are there any of these tied to the NFL? Or in no, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. The link. I think the XFL and the NFL have a bit of a. Uh, yeah sort of a wink and a nod partnership in this deal. USFL, not so much. Um, but I don't think it's going to inhibit anybody from excelling in the USFL and, and getting an opportunity. You saw it last year where a few guys... Right, but they're not in direct r- relations with the NFL. There's no farm like, league in the, for no the NFL, league. no. Neither yeah, one of them are like, like a farm NFL league, like Europe? baseball. Yeah, no, it's NFL not like Europe? that. No, no nothing okay. like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I support it. I, every time it's on, I turn it on. Right. I can't say that I'm real engaged in it. Mm-hmm just because I don't know who I'm watching or yes. You know Name I mean? recognition doesn't exist. Right. right. And uh, I don't know. I don't have a team. Right. Or, you know, but really I like to, you know, I, I, I I'm more based off when I watch football is based off people and watching people play and like who that person is. Sure. So I, not knowing anybody, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Jess. I don't watch any of it, sorry. <laughs> but I mean, as far as you stop watching they? when uh, the, the, the New York team. <laughs> the, New, yeah, the, the, the Generals are still in it. New Jersey Generals yeah. are still So, I mean, because I'm sure people are watching this that maybe don't have any, yeah. don't know anything about it. What, do they have, they don't play, each league doesn't play each other. They're no. two separate leagues, right? The XFL played earlier, okay. started right after the Super Bowl and did their league championship right to then. And then USFL, there was like maybe about a two week mm-hmm. crossover or yeah. a week crossover where the USFL was playing. And, um, USFL is obviously the same team names and league from back in the '80s when they started uh, that league, and it's not all the teams, but it's a good good number of them that are that are there. And then the XFL, that was the WWE sort of thing that the the Rock actually okay. bought the league from Vince McMahon. Yes. Not as as outrageous as it was when it first came out and the first time they did it, but much more. Uh, you know, cutting edge things that they did. The, the kickoffs are a big thing. They try to try to eliminate kickoffs mm-hmm. yeah. from a certain way. XFL did something where they they lined them up, 
what, 10 yards apart, Trey, or five yards apart? Yeah. Uh, yeah and then 10. the kicker was all by himself back at the 30, and he kicked off to him, and they just like scrummed like almost a rugby scrum. And really? then they, and if he got past them, you know, he could go all the way. Right. But it was one of those things. And, and, the, and the field, the same length field. Same like length I know. field. Uh, one thing that they're doing, which I think, and for, to John's point about not having it feeling affiliated with something, um, they are they were playing games at specific fields like they would be playing. They the were one field. Right. Well, that was last year. Now, I think they've, yeah. they've 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 gone to a few more fields and then the XFL did the same thing. So they're not all playing like specifically at one team. And I think that that hasn't really lended itself to people really catching on because mm -hmm. when the USFL, I'm, I'm the only person here who can remember this, but when the USFL was there in the 80s, they immediately had a fan base. I mean, not every city, but there was like a, a, a lot. Well, they of, also had some big names, though, too. Well, that's what happened. They went after they went after some players. I mean, right. I mean they paid huge some, name, yeah. names. They paid some they paid some big nine, big time names where people were watching that those people those people play Herschel Walker, Doug uh, Flutie, yeah. Steve Young, uh, uh, Kelvin Bryant, who ended up being a great that running, running back. back from Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. I know the who best that ever was. Uh, then there was uh, oh yeah, um, Marcus Dupree. Marcus Dupree, yeah, yeah, uh, Dupree. Reggie White. Played for the Memphis Showboats. Yeah, um, they had some names. There were some. I mean, you go through the list of players. You're like, wow, that was pretty impressive. And uh, guys, Moon, that, or he was Canadian. Canadian. We had Jim yeah. Kelly for the Houston Gamblers because he didn't want to play in Buffalo. <laughs> he said it was too cold. <laughs> and he said, "See, adios, I'm out of here." Um, Bobby A. Bear was a player that played for the for the Saints back in the day. He was a Michigan Panther quarterback. So guys that were superstar college yeah. players that they bid for and they and they did that. Now. Could they go after players at some point in time? I don't know. And I think Trey's correct in saying that really their real competition is NIL now. Because yeah, 100%. if somebody decides they don't want to be there anymore or whatever, they can say, well, maybe I'll go to the USFL or XFL. But NIL is keeping a lot of people around, and that will keep them around a little longer. Well, eventually, than they would yeah, you graduate, though. Yes, no doubt about yeah. that. But, but again, they can. I think, some, I think you're going to find people like we mentioned it before about different, different sports, but sports that don't have a lot of revenue when they go off to the professional ranks – if you're going to get money in college, you're going to stay for five years as, as long as you right. can. So you're going to do that and uh, and hock somebody's potato chips or whatever else it may be. So definitely do that. But it's interesting because um, there's such a thirst for football. I mean, you see it in the off for the NFL. Um, I think it is getting good. Like you said, you watch it. You, I watch it too. I'm, I am exactly like you. I do not engage, you know, and get totally into it. But if it's a good game, as things are happening. I'll stay with it, but I don't have the name recognition right. to kind of follow. Right. That makes it tough. Yeah, it does. All right, with that, we'll take our final break of the night, come back, and we'll do what's our, our What's Bugging Me segment and our prediction segment with everybody here. So uh, back here at Doug Jeep in a few minutes about the what's bugging us and what's what our crystal balls say. See you back in a minute. See you. segment of the 941 Sports Zone here at Douglas Jeep and brought to you by Vibrant Aspect Media. Josh and, and uh, Francis, I almost called him Kevin. I don't know how I got that from. <laughs> <laughs> Josh and Francis over there taking care of us, making us look good and sound good every week. Uh, Trey, we're do our What's Bugging Me segment. you have anything bugging you this week that you want to oh. get off your chest? Uh, nothing too serious. I, I would say if anything's bugging me, I'm just really tired of getting beat by Jess Pacino in golf. And <laughs> That's probably never happening again. I'm bringing my A game from we'll here see, on out. We'll see about that. It's the summer. It's, it's yeah. this when this is when the competition gets really heated because yeah. summer golf is when it you, everybody starts playing again. So, but my problem is like right. like she can use her putter from the tee box. You know what I'm saying? So like if I have a shot that goes out of bounds, I have to take a yeah. stroke away, and she's already putting. I'm like, what the heck? So and it's just unfair in my opinion. Hey, listen, I'll if, play further back. If if, I if, if Jess had a wedge game. We'd all be it'd in be great. good shape. Yeah. Yeah. It should be it's, no, it's my, it should be on LPGA. Yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, we'll go, Jess, if you're ready to go. 
So I think I'm going to go with, as the Booster Club president. Okay. Um, we have to host a lot of, you know, fundraising events. And it's getting, it's kind of getting harder and harder to, to find a place to do those things sometimes. Right. Because there's been... A, it's trending to like the corporatization of some oh, of the places God, would normally hundred percent right? would um, you know be on board like that to yeah it's a fundraiser for the kids and we'll do whatever you want it's kind of hard to to uh, find partnerships right now uh, at places and um, I don't have a problem with growth I think it's great I think it's good for our for our area um, but I have a problem when you're coming in and doing all that and then you don't really want to give back to the community because that's what we so we're still a small town you know and we're right. still you know you know our kids need need resources and it's that's just kind of what frustrates I me agree. so that's what's that's what's I bugging agree. me that's a good one it has it has been something i've you've seen of a lot over the over the past few years where you just don't know the the guy behind the door or the gal right. behind the door that you could go up and they talk don't live to. here Right. That's the point. You just, yeah. no, it's, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not a decision maker is, is very, is said a lot because it's a, the, the decision maker doesn't, the, is in another yeah. state. And you get, you get a lot of, um, and I, not to pick on anybody or name any names, but there were a couple of people that were uh, longtime sponsors of us and, you know, they just, they retired and God bless them. You know, everybody <laughs> that works hard has that right. And, uh, people that took over for them kind of blew a lot of smoke and said, you know, we're on board. We want to do everything that our predecessor did. And, and it was all just talk and, you know, no, no yeah. action. And, and I, I'm cool with that. But, like, don't waste my time. Don't waste our time. Don't waste parents that volunteer for us. time. I just don't like it. So that's what's bugging me. There you go. John, what's bugging you? I kind of already said it. Say you it know. again. What, what's Emphasize <laughs> it. I don't know how to say it. What, what, what do I say? I say, you know, uh, um, I, I'm not going to apologize for having yeah. a good program. Yeah. And I'm not going to float around and, and act like, um, act like uh, I don't hear what's being said. Sure. And, you know, I guess what's bugging me is, you know, you get on, you, you know, some of these parents or people can get on social media and just say whatever the heck they want. Sure. No repercussion. None. Just say whatever they want. Right. And uh, I, I don't think that's right. I think that, uh, and I'm not going to get on there and debate with you. Right. But it's just like, wow. You know. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of add a little something for you. So it, it's, it's almost as if that you're not allowed to have success unless Everyone you're given the pretty girl. Unless you're, you have permission yeah. to have success. Everyone hates the pretty girl. Right. And so, th so that's what it is. And, you know, uh, you had your, your, your sort of colleagues. You know, Craig Faulkner's been down this road with things, you know, with the baseball team in Venice. You've had a situation in, with, for Brian Wheatley in some of these cases. We've talked to him about different things, um, nothing specific. But um, as soon as it gets out there, they, there's, there's a very, very, um, you know, there's sort of like this undertone of like, well, if you don't do it for me, no matter what's the, whatever, whatever, you, I'm going to be on the campaign. I, th I think there's a it. sense of like entitlement too sure. sometimes, you know, and when you're successful and people see that, they just kind of want to go after you. So, but like you said it earlier, you know, don't worry about what we're doing. We're doing things the right way. Why are, why do people want to leave? Why yeah. do people want to come? Why here? do people want to not why yeah. we know why people want to come here. Right. Okay. But what, what's the reason why they want to leave? That's the question that everybody should ask. What's going on? in their house that they they want to leave and come to our house so right. that's just yeah. no that's doubt how i feel no doubt that all right so i'm going to go a little different here okay i'm not going to talk about sports so it's bugging me <laughs> okay. so what's bugging me is that i now have to listen for the next 18 months about the next presidential election <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. sighs> i mean I, I it's just it's 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 part of the process i I'm know what excited. it is excited Okay, I might have been able. I've, I'm going to be able to say, hopefully, that I talked to the pre the president, shook his hand, and right. spent some time with right. him. Right. No, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of. I understand and the positive part of it, but it's the it's the it's the same thing. Almost. It's oh, going to be exciting. now. It's going to be now the tearing down of everybody that decides oh, to go to be in the president. It's, it's, it's <laughs> going it, to be great. And from much, well, no, no matter which side of the, of, of of where you fall. Um, it's, 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 there's, there's such a negative light. Fall. Cast, did cast you see off. Biden fell? I did. 
he f- <laughs> listen, he handled he it relatively hard. well. For, for, <laughs> for, no, I don't know. Yeah, he didn't get hurt, and he, and he said he got sandbagged or something like that. Yeah. So I was like, well, that was sandbagged. <laughs> he got <laughs> something. And, uh, but again, it's, it's, just, it's just now I look at it and I'm like, okay. So this is going to be for the, this is what life's going to be now. It's going to be about somebody did this or somebody said that, or to hear what the hot mic said this and this and that. So oh, it's going to be great. It's just, it's, really it's just a lot to deal with. And it's unfortunate that is, that is the case, but uh, it is, it is what it is. And, um, but unfortunately we're, um, we're going to have to go through a lot of uh, r- really, I mean, you, you looking at it from any perspective, to try to handicap if you like using a sports, you know, sort of scenario here, you can look and say, well, the the the, the lead person for the Super Bowl next year is going to be, you know, the the the, the, who, the, right. the Kansas City Chiefs, right? But trying to handicap an election, you just don't know what's going to happen. No. Anything can be thrown in there. Any situation can do, do that. So a uh, little bit, a little bit of that uh, can can be a little annoying. So uh, no sports because sports right now, as far as as far as everything's concerned, it's sort of. It is what it is. It's docile, and we're good. We're good to yeah. go. Um, with that, any predictions, guys? I thought we already did predictions. I'm going. Heat. You're good. Yeah. Heat Trey. Seven. Heat. 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 Seven. Heat. Sure. Heat. All right. I'm still. I'm, I'm hanging nuggets with that still. So with that. In five uh, still though, or four, no? Six, I'll, seven? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say in seven. I like seven. Okay. I think it's gonna go away. Game last games last night's game. A lot game of short balls. It. This will come. Yeah. Next two games. <laughs> yeah. Prediction. A lot of short balls. <laughs> a lot of short balls in that game. So with that, anyway, um, we will uh, wrap up tonight's show. Um, hold on one second. I'm just gonna check one more thing before I wrap up can, all the way. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Oh. I got a question posed to me, oh. real quick. All right. By whom? <laughs> by a, by a very interested uh, fan of the show. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just ask the question. Do you think that Florida sports could be affected by a Ron DeSantis run for president? Meaning, do you do? Will there be is like there, is, like Florida like professional sports or, or Florida, high school? Yes, yes, because okay. he's going to make nil and high school sports. Okay, okay. Trey, anything about any any, any regards to that? No thoughts. I have no clue. I, what has he What has he done? I mean, he did uh, what bill he passed? He passed about he college passed nil, that, right? Well, no, he just also passed that um, they have control over the FHSA. Okay. Oh no way. Yeah, and they also passed yeah. that. Uh, uh, you know, one interesting thing is that, you know, non-traditional students now, or for the last few years, non-traditional students, meaning that you go to a school that doesn't offer a sport, you can kind of choose where you want to go play your sport. Right. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be in your district. He's passed that if you're at a non-traditional sport or non-traditional school, school you can go play at a private school now. Okay. Hmm. There you go. I think that's going to be some issues with... Um, the private schools parents i mean if you're paying a certain amount of money your kids going there and then someone that's taking flvs comes in and takes this position i think they're gonna have a problem with that yeah i think you're right yeah i mean i think they could probably send them to a different school you mean well they could probably paid it yeah Yeah. but i'm just saying like the the kid that you know all these kids that are at that school are paying to play at that school yeah yeah, i don't hear you yeah i mean i I think, I mean, it depends on how it all plays out. I Probably the whole thing with the FHSAA, because what do they actually I think do? it's going to be a positive. I think it'll be positive. Everything I think it'll be positive is, for yeah. that, too. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that, well, what was the actual question? What was the actual what, question? Do you think Ron okay. DeSantis well, well, becomes... It, but could it, could it, uh, with his run for presidency, uh, will it suffer? Uh, will, will Florida sports in general suffer, suffer. from that? I thought you said effect. Effective. Well, effect is suffer. I'm, 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 well, so I, it, I guess it would. Positive, yeah. Well, no, it could be negative because it could be a new governor, right? Or is he still in office while he's running? He's still in, still in office. That, that okay. was voted in by the legislature. He can remain in office while he's running for yeah. president. So that was something well. that, that happened in particular. So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean honestly, I think, I think it, the, the more attention sometimes brought this to, to any situation uh, if like for Florida it probably puts more eyes to, to what's going on. And if you're doing well, you know, Tampa Bay Rays, look at them. We didn't talk about them this week, but they're still on, on a roll. And uh they're you know the, that's the, the you know and things are being pointed positively towards them and and he's the he's the guy out there talking and talking up with how florida is uh on the rise and i guess i guess i guess it, it wouldn't hurt it doesn't really yeah, hurt i i think like i said uh with the fhsa stuff i think if that i think that would be a positive yeah but i don't know what he i don't know gotcha yeah <laughs> with that i will try to bow on this show okay. tonight <laughs> 
thank you all for tuning in to the 941 Sports Zones. Thanks to our guest, Trey Burton and Jessica Pacino. And don't forget to go on www. SuncoastSnapperSlapper.com. There you go. And go ahead and sign up for the fishing tournament if you can make it out. And uh, if you're going to sponsor, same thing. You can go get a hold of the on the website yep. and our, do that as well. Our numbers are on there. Call us if you want to talk. Gotcha. <laughs> and, John, thank you again for being here. And we'll see you next week as well. With that, see you all next week on the 941 Sports Zone. Have a good evening.